The story we will deal with in this reflection is that of a man who, for reasons not mentioned in the scriptures, had a withered hand. I imagine him looking every morning at his withered hand hanging from his wrist. It is there as a messenger constantly reminding him of his limitation or perhaps, what he could do before that event. If he didn't have it, he might have learned to make do with the stump, but the withered hand has lost function and size and has become a nuisance that keeps him stuck. When I think about their situation, it is impossible not to see the similarity with some areas of our spiritual life and interpersonal relationships. Some of us have relationships that have deteriorated over time, to which we did not pay enough attention to resolve conflicts and every day they have been losing vitality and strength, and have become an obstacle that prevents us from moving forward. But it is also possible that there are areas of our spiritual life that bind us and make us uncomfortable. That sin, that bad habit that we struggle with, but do not see results, that we try to ignore, but every time we set out to be productive, to undertake, it is there to stop us. Perhaps they are explosions of bad temper, weakness in resisting gossip, envy, or difficulty in forgiving, turning the page and forgetting the harm that was done to us, and that, because of resentment, has withered our capacity to believe that better times will come. What is important to emphasize is that for both the man with a withered hand and for us, there is an answer in Jesus. That Sabbath morning like any other Jew, the man with a withered hand cleaned himself up and went to the synagogue hoping that the prayer, teaching and singing would bring some relief to his hard life. But the Gospel according to Mark tells us that God had heard his plea and the solution to his problem would come at a time when he least expected it. Chapter 3 relates this event saying, Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Do you notice the attitude of the religious? They were concerned to see to it that the rites to which they had become accustomed were not broken, not even by God himself, no, not without his approval. Have you seen people who have that same attitude? They are in their congregations ready to validate what may or may not happen to people who come seeking God with a sincere heart because they are bothered by their appearance or because they consider them too sinful to be saved. Jesus said to the man with a deformed hand, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? God is sovereign to do good to whomever he wishes to do it, at the moment he decides to do it and to whomever humbly seeks him. To demonstrate this, Jesus put the man in a place where everyone could have a good view of the miracle that was to take place before his eyes. But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. If at any time we have thought that God remains unaffected by what we think, say or do, here is the demonstration, once again, that the opposite is true. Even though they were his open opponents, Jesus felt a mixture of emotions, anger because it was unbelievable that they would be so foolish as to oppose his wish to fulfill his desire to heal the man with a crippled hand. Sadness at their lack of compassion for this man's suffering. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand, and it was restored. The man with the withered hand did not question anything. He was so grateful to be able to have his healthy hand that he extended it with all his faith that, by doing so, its functioning would return to normal. He did not dwell on the impossibilities or on what the Pharisees who were ready to accuse their benefactor might think, he simply wanted to be freed from his limitation. There is a big difference between that man and some of us who have withered relationships or withered areas of our spiritual life. Some settle into that situation because, although they have prayed for help for God to work a miracle, they are unwilling to do their part and reach out. Forgive the offense and just let it all go? Keep your mouth shut and stop gossiping? Tame your eyes so you don't see the wrong thing? Give up that old habit and start again at this point in life? Yes, again and again, yes. Suppose the man had said within himself, but since he is asking me to extend my hand, can't he see that it is withered and that the nerves do not respond to the order of the brain? If he had done so, he would have kept his hand withered. In order for the areas of our life that are withered to return to functionality, it is necessary that we are willing to do that which from the natural perspective is impossible to do. As long as we command the hand to reach out, the greatness of God's power will be manifested and it will come back to functional life. There will be those who will be angry, who cannot rejoice to see our progress, because their hardened hearts cannot celebrate the blessings that God gives us, who cannot bear that we achieve what they have not been able to achieve because of their wickedness. 
As was the case with the Pharisees present who at once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. For them, the welfare of a family whose father could work with full skill and thus earn the necessary income for a better life did not matter. That man was an insignificant individual to them and it was irrelevant what happened to him. But for Jesus, everyone who is in need is the object of his attention. Everyone who has in his heart a fervent desire to be delivered from his situation and believes that God can bring him to the state of well-being he longs for, is a candidate for a miracle. Jesus did not come to the synagogue to make those who were already rich richer, nor to congratulate all those who considered themselves good, or to celebrate with those who were surrounded by everything their hearts desired. Jesus is like the physician who practices his profession and seeks out those who are sick in order to fulfill his mission. Therefore, if there is any area of our life that is withered and needs attention, we should know that at the distance of a sincere prayer, of a fervent desire to see the greatness of God manifest in our lives, Jesus Christ will make his intervention. And it doesn't matter if it is the most appropriate place, or we are in the middle of the most expected audience, it only matters that God's compassion will manifest itself in our favor bringing to life, that which for us became impossible to solve. Let us pray to the Lord saying together, Father of all glory and power, we praise and bless you because your love surpasses our ability to deserve or understand it. Each and every one of us carries within us areas that have withered away due to neglect or inability to deal with them and we need your timely intervention to bring them back to the state of wellness they should be in. Perhaps it has been the relationships with our parents, children, spouse, family or friends that deteriorated because we did not put enough effort, effort and attention on both sides to solve them, but we know that you have the power to intervene and help us to repair them completely. We ask you to work in our favor, so that the economy that began to wither due to our own mismanagement or other causes, due to fortuitous events, may return to normal and give us the possibility of continuing to be the means through which you bless our homes. It may be Lord that the area that is withered in our lives, is the ability to be compassionate, generous, to love those who irritate us, to undertake and be constant in what we do or to rejoice with the good of others. If so, we pray that you put your love in us so that we can be a reflection of your character and not a reason for your sadness as were the Pharisees. Look deep into our hearts and if you see that we are allowing our hearts to be hardened by the wickedness of others, let our understanding let us see the pain and limitations that are manifesting in each person who does wrong and let compassion be born in us. Thank you for coming to heal us, no matter where we are, the people who may oppose us, the state of our situation or how impossible it may seem. We know that at your command, no matter how difficult it may seem, we will receive the welfare we have been waiting for so long. We will do what corresponds, we will extend our withered hand, knowing that you will do what is necessary to see us happy and fulfilled. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen.